just to have a seat and clip this on you. The reason that we're sort of doing this in dim light with the type of camera we're using and Phil's expertise, he gives a little bit of a softer picture and he's going to have the finished product will look more like it was filmed rather than videos and have a, a richer. Whatever your desire, I have you, no friend. problem. Thank you, I appreciate that. And, and we appreciate your support, Mr. President. Yes, sir. Great help, good, great for your organization. That pen there came from the President of the United States. Now, unfortunately, someone else pinned me with that one. It's fun to volunteer. It's a volunteerism service award for the president. Right. Your name, thank you. My name is Wesley McDuffie. I'm the president of the International Conference of Polish Chaplains. And where is your Well, that's a litany of things here. I, um, I'm a chaplain for uh, Dowerling Gardens Department of Public Safety in Texas. Texas Department of Public Safety. I uh, help with Arlington PD and chief chaplain with the DEA and Dallas Field Division. Well, first, I think that a chaplain ought to be qualified as far as education and wise. I think it should be trained in the field to know what to do and what not to do. Uh, most importantly, there are some things that you can't teach in a classroom, and that's the ability to listen. Uh, chaplain got to know when to talk and when not to talk, and got to know what command presence is all about. Sometimes it really don't require you to say anything. It just means that you be present in the event that someone want to share something with you, that they know that you're there. And sometimes people will come by and say, thank you, and you never said a word. Um, how do you, uh, how do you, did you develop the skill over time uh, to find the appropriate, appropriate words? Um, my fear would always be that I'm, I'm giving people plain advice and I'm being more of a detriment. At some point, you must have. Well, I love people, so therefore I can, uh, you know, I, if you would, uh, the Spirit allows me to, to speak unto their heart as they speak to me. I read people very well, too. I can, I can pretty much see when there's a hurt or, or when there's a concern, which is a big difference here. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of uh, when I, as growing up, I've always cared about people and I always uh, tried to be a uh, support to the older people, even as a young lad. And I think that has a lot to do with it, as growing up with them, seeing the needs that they had, and listening to them and gleaning up on their wisdom. And I think that has carried me and uh, assisted me in this chaplain school. Was there ever a time when you got through to somebody in a way that you just, just by intuition, that, uh, that, that got through to them? It has been. There's been times when you cross the color lines, if you would, uh, that when you feel like that didn't even, what you said to a person, they didn't even hear it, didn't even receive it. And you felt like you gave it your all in all and you left and you left with the question in mind. I wonder if they really received what I just left with them or did they not hear it because of who I am um, as, as, the, as a black man that I am ministering to a, a white family and because there's been some families that say uh, is there anybody else that you can send over here and quite naturally don't hurt my feelings I just know that there's a need and we find somebody else to send but there's been a time when someone came back and said hey just want you to know I really appreciate everything that you did for me and that was a situation where I'm like oh thank you I didn't realize I penetrated but I, I didn't look back I just I was just happy that they uh, verified that I did uh, touch their heart and was able to help them in some way or another. You obviously know ministers that you uh, respect in, in their position, but you may have a sense that they wouldn't be good chaplains. Do you have 
I do. I, I talk to many ministers along the way and some that has uh, voiced the desire to be a chaplain. And some I've shared with them, I said, well, you're a great administrator. And they said, what are you saying? I said, well, I'm saying you're a great administrator or you're a great evangelist. And, uh, and there's a couple I've had to come out and say, your field is evangelism, not in chaplaincy, because you don't preach to everyone. Sometimes you've got to be able to allow people to talk to you and you not say a word, and you're not capable of doing that. minutes with a man or a woman, I can pretty well tell, after being in it as long as I have, probably about 27 years, I can pretty well tell if you're going to be, uh, if this is for you or not, um, just in your general conversation, uh, sometimes I, I, I pops up too much, and this place has, it has no room for a bunch of eyes. Yeah. And so I, I can pretty well tell right off the bat.